how do we report on these kinds of attacks accurately without using words like xenophobia, without using words like illegal foreigners? Because we, we might not use them in our scripts, but immediately when they're subbed and sent to the subs, they come back differently. The subs are the ones that change it to words like your whole headline has changed to this was a xenophobic attack. How do we educate the subs as well that actually what you are actually, how you're changing my script is actually incorrect? Can you please change it into a specific way that doesn't trample anyone's you know, human dignity or human rights? How do we educate each other in the newsrooms? especially the subs, because that's where most of our work ends up being you know, scripted and ends up being published. How do we communicate with them and say, actually, how you change my script is actually wrong. Can you please change it in, in, in this way? That's my question. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Oburu. And yes, many years, uh, today, Teta FM is celebrating 18 years. I was trained by IAJ. Uh, I'm coming back by default in media uh, because of the nature of work I'm doing with the migrants and gender-based violence and, 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 and where semi-rural people and rural people, we don't find media people coming to take stories from our communities. I will make a typical example before I pose my question. We had an incident which happened a week ago whereby um, documents were taken from 4 p.m. on a Friday and they were like grabbed and taken away, not allowed to close their shops, thrown into a van for, tw for 24 hours. They were released 4 p.m. Saturday. They were never allowed to go and relieve themselves. And we had to call Dr. March because we had an Ethiopian who had a kidney failure in that thing to say, can we intervene so that she's, she's able to read? We communicated, we sent messages to media houses. Till this day, no one responded. And I'm ashamed of our media, actually. That's why I came here to say, because it's IAJ, I'm going there to say, and make a plea to say we need training in the grassroots from the people who will cover stories with understanding, cover stories with sensitivity, and even people from other countries to be able to cover stories of their own with their own language, then they will be able to distribute those uh, stories out in other countries because. To be honest, media in South Africa has failed us. Even as a woman, I was failed by the media. Whereby when a woman is raped, it depends how beautiful you look, where I'm situated. Media has, has a way of dividing the struggle of women, black people, poor people. When it's somebody else immigrant, we will see everyone flocking including big uh, NGOs. They will be there with their placard. When a woman is raped from Zimbabwe, <coughs> raped by South African, we hear nothing. But when a South African woman is raped by a man from another country, I'm talking by men. Both these men raped a woman. It depends which country I go from. Now they will divide the struggle. Oh, she's raped by a Lesotho uh, national. All of us in the country go out up in arms, like it happened in Kukasdor, and that case failed because of how it was happened. And that is a plea to IAJ to say, please, can you go back to what you did years ago for communities? Retrain people from the grassroots so that we're able to tell our own stories. Thank you. But Rapita, it's it's a uh, okay. Let me start by saying talking about Rapita. Yes. And, and about how best can we ensure that we're not misrepresented by big, powerful houses? Um, well, first of all, they are here, and I think it's important that we partner with them uh, so that they, they know. 
uh, we are partners in, in, this, in this thing. And, and that way we can mitigate the chances of them misrepresenting us. <clears throat> but as the network, we've actually also adopted uh, a motto that was normally used by visually impaired people, which says, nothing for us without us. Um, we have created four rep bodies of suspected Zamazamas found in the Nongi Road one newspaper says April 2022. Uh, trusted well, um, 21 dead Zamazamas were drawn after the rains, so we're not uh, 2022. Right. It goes on like that. Uh, Kruger's Lock, 21 people uh, may have died. The numbers that are quickly put together are more than the 60 that were killed in one shot. But the way it is reported, 31. I, you must see the photograph about uh, West Bank. They, they're lying in the street there, right? They're like white, uh, it's like a bit, like cars are images, and they're silver cloth, etc. That's it. That's the only story. Gone. Because you put the word illegal on it, and there's no protection. So, I guess the, the, the self criticism that I, I, I want to try and do this as a more systematic one because I suspect that the numbers may be far larger of the people died unrecognized. Sometimes you know who died by going to the foreign country. The Sutu will tell you uh, what is repatriated, right? uh, or Zimbabwe will tell you. But uh, there's no dignity here for all the lovely constitution. So what the president does, he deploys the army, right? And well received by everyone, 3,300 soldiers will go and start this illegal mining. Listen, let me, let me, let's get it clear. Syndicates are involved in some of this, but there's also people seeking to leave, the living, poor people who were mine workers in this particular area who be entrenched. This is a declining industry. So, the solution then is that we need to think regional. The people are already integrated. Strana speaking people. We have probably the same number as Botswana. Sisutu speaking people we've got. You know, our region is integrated here. We've got people, Shandani speaking because I'm only. <coughs> the region is, is quite integrated. We have to start thinking beyond nation state solutions here to overcome this. And I think part of our responsibility cannot be simply legal, but must be a political initiative to suggest that we need a sub regional economy for the free movement of Africans, which we you know us have various declarations for the continent, but then we still harass Africans here. So that's my first political point that I think we need. Let me also state as a criticism for unions. Uh, I have some connection with with Barcelona. My, my partners from there. But um, the unions have a program for immigrants. When you enter the country, you can do a course with the union where you learn the national languages. It's Catalan, Catalonia, Australia. Why is Kosovo and Sarto not thinking about that with the languages? Because we have to show that we are embracing fellow workers, not just in a march. Where are the churches before that used to provide soup kitchens, etc., etc.? They used to provide all the support for the most vulnerable. I remember the Methodist Church, and Paul Graham has done amazing work all of his life. But basically, it's a decline of our compassion that none of this exists anymore. It is hate has taken over. So for me, it's not social media. It's not social media. It is. It leads using both traditional media and social media. The elites in mainstream media, I mean, it's like in, in Europe, the, the right wing are getting elected in, in parliament. It's like in Israel, the Nazis are in power. I mean, it's, it's exactly that kind of thing. Fascist parties are winning. So, so clearly, what you need to do is that you've got to find a more holistic center that can bring us together. But each of us on our own cannot do it. So we need to reconfigure how it is. But I like comrade from the from the refugee led organizations. You know, it's like I come from the trade union, so we had workers control. I really think if the comrades are up to 
We are very worthy to be led. We are very worthy to be led. But you must lead. You know, you know, it's not going to be given to you. You've got to assert that you are there and convening all of us. But there's a really a need for community. Ask me Sharon and others to do this with amongst the other things that they are doing really won't succeed. But we need to ask all of the Ukrainians over here. They don't defend us very good. But this report of 2008, why don't we commemorate it? My final point about the elections. Uh, they will sign a peace pledge. We need to insert in there that they will desist from fake news, lies, and other such things, and and not uh, something that, that, that talks about bullying uh, the, the, the non national. So we've got to find the right words for that. But we've got to talk to Janet Love and others quite early to make sure that this sentiment comes in as part of the pitch. Because you can see Patriots and Alliance and others, they're not winning on uh, I love Israel now. The, the, the refugee one, uh, the office thing can finish up, they'll be eating refugees very soon. We will be using the community. So we need to be very, very aware. So I say, getting with the pledges, we meet with each of these political parties, we call the Human Rights Commission in the chapter 9 generally. Human Rights Commission we ask them to defend their own reports because by not commemorating these reports and checking what lessons have been learned, they part of this commenta, a rage of memory for people who die. These are pointed out. Those 60 are small in the number of people who are dying every day trying to eat a little bit. We're trying to eat a little bit, but the government, no one tells you, the government hasn't got a policy on mine closures. When they close mines badly, people just open it. It's like using plastic bags. You know, they don't go for the job. So this is where journalism is failing us. They've got to say, your mine policy, mine closure policy, has been laying there for a long time, you know, and securitization, whether by the Sufi or by the President's 3,300, is not the way to go. You know, we need to think beyond some form of regional solidarity economy, but recently.